Even electric car fans are still trying to argue that fossil fuels are cheaper than renewables. This is false. Here's the data. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Great to see you all. Hope you've had an amazing week. My name's Sam Evans. I'm coming to you from Melbourne in Australia. Thank you for subscribing. It does support the channel. It supports the movement, which is to make the earth a better place to live on. Not only for us, but for our kids. So when we die, we don't go, hey, why didn't we support clean energy and electric cars? It would have made a lot of sense. Fortunately, it's what you're doing. It's awesome to see. Firmed wind and solar are much cheaper than fossil fuels, even with inflation, says the CSIRO. The quicker we move towards renewables, the more trillions we save. True story. We save trillions of dollars. If we can move about 10 years quicker, we can get there by, say, 2040, we'll save $10 trillion versus 2050 apparently. Firm renewable energy from a mix of solar and wind remains by far the cheapest source of new build electricity generation in Australia. That's despite a jump in costs across all technologies due to global inflationary pressures. This is the conclusion of the 2022-23 Gen Cost Report from CSIRO, the latest annual update from the National Science Agency on the costs of electricity generation, energy storage, and hydrogen production. Renew Economy says the draft report finds that compared to 2021-22 data, technology costs have increased 20% on average for 2022-23, but with significant diversity across different technologies, ranging from 9% for solar PV, up to 35% for wind, and 31% for open cycle gas. But the thing is, the efficiency of these products has actually improved. For example, especially with wind turbines, which now generate much more power. CSIRO says this jump in technology costs can be attributed to upwards pressure from global supply chain constraints and inflation following the COVID-19 pandemic and exacerbated by the war in Ukraine. Now, what I think is during the COVID-19 pandemic, no one really produced anything. I mean, yeah, some people did, but a lot of production worldwide just didn't happen. But you know what we did keep doing? We kept on printing money. Yeah, big time. I mean, look at the amount of money printed in countries like Japan. Anyhow, I'm not going to pick on anyone. I'll just, just pretend I didn't say that. But despite these cost increases, the CSIRO says the findings of the latest gen cost report remain consistent with previous years that integrated renewables onshore wind and solar PV supported by transmission and storage remain the lowest cost technologies, period. This report comes at the end of a year that has seen soaring coal and gas costs drive the average wholesale price of electricity in Australia to record highs, up around 320 megawatts per hour. Now, the thing is, right, there is one area in Australia, one state, where the cost of electricity hasn't gone up at all. Not Zero, zilch, nada. Not at all. Interestingly, that is the only state in Australia where we have 100% renewable energy. And that, my friends, is not just some kind of strange coincidence. That is a direct result of, well, the sun doesn't change its cost to shine. Fortunately, the wind doesn't suddenly say, ha ha, I'm going to charge you more blow today. Isn't that awesome? Such has been the impact of fossil fuel costs on the affordability of electricity that the federal government this week rushed a controversial gas price cap legislation through parliament along with measures to urge and help households quit gas and go electric, a measure that is already achieving some drops in electricity futures prices. Predictably, the move to cap gas prices has been slammed by the federal opposition. In other words, the other side of government. So basically for us, the Republicans is the other side right now. And by the fossil fuel industry, who are furious because their profits are being curbed, even though they get billions of dollars in subsidies, still pretty much everywhere around the world, with Santos CEO Kevin Gallagher describing it as a Soviet-style policy and a form of nationalization. Isn't this interesting? I mean, the fossil fuel industry has nothing to say about the trillions of dollars in subsidies they've received, but all of a sudden, when there might be a little uh, a break in those subsidies, or maybe potentially, God forbid, uh, a carbon cost mechanism, 
They're all crying and whining like children. But IEEFA's Electricity and Renewables Analyst, Joanna Bauer, says the measure is designed to work together with coal price caps and electrification package and the capacity investment scheme announced last week to ease upward pressure on energy prices while we shift to renewables. And that, my friends, is what they're really angry about. They're angry because, well, basically every coal power generation fossil fuel station in Australia will shut down by about 2035. It's all being accelerated. Basically, Australia here, we've announced we don't want to continue burning fossil fuels because actually, well, the key reason is because it costs too much money. Seriously. While coal and gas price caps will put downward pressure on electricity prices in the short term, the proposed electrification package will help businesses and households cut energy bills permanently by helping them reduce reliance on expensive and high emission gas and improve the energy performance of their buildings, said Bauer. The capacity investment scheme announced last week to drive 10 billion of public and private sector in renewables and storage. Battery storage is going crazy, by the way, here in Australia, which was started by Tesla, will also help insulate Australians against volatile fossil fuel prices and enable emissions reductions. It's worth pointing out that Australia used to be the biggest copper in the world. Per capita, we were the biggest polluters per person in the world. Kind of embarrassing, to be honest, when I read that news, and it was the case for many years. That, though, is starting to change. In fact, it has changed. We are now no longer the worst. Far from it, in fact. In fact, we plan on going to 90% renewables within eight years' time for the entire country. I think we're going to get there quicker than that. Now, in regards to the comment that this will drive public and private sector investment into renewables and storage, helping insulate Australians against volatile fossil fuel prices and enabling emissions reductions, the other side of government and the gas lobby and some mainstream media outlets say that this view aligns most closely with the data presented in CSIRO's latest annual report and the trends it projects. In other words, it's saying it doesn't agree. It's false information. Globally, renewables led by wind and solar are the fastest growing energy source and the role of electricity is expected to increase materially over the next 30 years, with electricity technologies presenting some of the lowest cost abatement opportunities, the CSIRA report says. The thing is, this is true. Even after factoring in the additional costs of new transmission buildouts, investment into energy storage, such as batteries, battery storage, and the ongoing use of peaking gas capacity to support the reliable supply of electricity under high shares of variable renewables, the CSRO says. Now, the thing is, we just realized that we don't actually need these peaker plants to stabilize the grid. In fact, we don't need fossil fuels to stabilize the grid at all. In Adelaide, South Australia, renewables were used 100% when the grid was isolated for about a week, and it worked fine. The only thing we had to do was turn off some of the solar we're getting too much power from the solar panels. Amazing. This report finds a factoring inflationary effect CSR expects will linger until around 2027. The additional cost to support a combination of solar PV and wind generation in 2030 is estimated at between $16 to $25 per megawatt hour, depending on the share of renewables. As you can see in these charts, by CSIRO's calculations, this puts the levelized cost of energy from firm renewables somewhere between 50 to 100 megawatt hours, even with a share of up to 90% of variable renewable energy. This means it beats out every form of coal or gas generation and comes in well below the LCOE projections for coal and gas with carbon capture and storage in 2030, as well as for nuclear. The annual process to update electricity generation, storage, and hydrogen technology cost trajectories is incredibly valuable as we plan for an accelerated transformation of the national electricity market, says Marin York, the Australian Energy Market Operator's Executive General Manager of System Design. Now, I've got to make a point here. On the Electric Viking Facebook group, right, which you come and join, why not? Come and join the group. People were arguing recently, saying, there was a number of people, in fact, ganging up on someone else saying, the data you've posted here is wrong. Renewable energies cost way more, way more than gas, coal, nuclear, etc. That's what they were saying. Personally, I came on there, 
And I said, you're wrong. That's just, that's the wrong information. Maybe the facts that they posted weren't correct, but you're wrong on those, those statements you're making. Now, they argued against me saying that I was wrong. Anyhow, here's the info for you guys. Here it is, right on this page. Here's the data. This is coming from the CSIRO. I'm pretty sure they know more than you do when it comes to actually working out the numbers. So your back of the envelope numbers where you've written on a piece of paper, they're, they're good. I mean, it's, don't get me wrong. It's good that you've done that work. But I'm sorry, we're talking about here, this is a place where they have hundreds and hundreds of staff working out the exact numbers, the exact numbers, not the back of the envelope numbers that you've worked out. So this is the information. This proves, right, that it is cheaper. The Gen Cost project assists us and industry stakeholders to together identify the assets needed to efficiently achieve a secure, reliable, and importantly, affordable electricity supply for consumers into the future, York says. The final gen cost report will be delivered mid-2023. It's prepared in consultation with the Australian energy market operator. And this shows you my point that I've been making on this channel now ever since I started this channel. The future of the world, my friends, is absolutely not fossil fuels. Yeah, sure, we need oil for plastics, whatever, for a few things, tires. But by and large, what we don't need are people spreading misinformation saying that fossil fuels are cheaper than renewables when that's clearly false. That's clearly false. Now remember, all these numbers don't factor in the technologies that I talk about on this channel regularly, such as what? Lithium ion phosphate batteries already putting downwards price pressure on the cost of energy storage. What about sodium batteries? Sodium batteries are said, CATL themselves, biggest battery company in the world said, it's going to reduce the price of energy storage by 30%. 30%. What about all the other energy storage mechanisms that we're coming out that I've reported on on this channel? There is so many of them. There is so many ways we can reduce the cost of renewables. It's happening. It's happening faster than we think. Now, inflation may, in fact, appear to increase the cost. Remember, inflation is affecting everyone. Everyone, right? And everything. So just because inflation hit solar and wind, it doesn't mean it didn't hit gas and coal even worse, which it did. So there's the information. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. And as always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below.